In this video, we'll be discussing case study two, the Jade case study for the March 2024 reset. You'll find a link to a free worksheet in the description box. Case study two. Jade is 23 and after graduating from university with a degree in geography, she has worked in various roles. Six months ago, Jade secured a job in the travel industry, working for a company that promotes exclusive travel destinations across the world. Jade currently earns £32,000 plus bonuses. Jade works in the marketing department from her office in London two days a week or working from home three days a week in her rented flat which she shares with two friends. Jade does not drive and uses the London Underground to travel to work. Once a month, Jade's employers fly her to a destination they want to promote to their high income customers. Jade stays there for a few days, then spends the rest of the month helping to design the marketing literature for this exclusive holiday. Jade is 23, so she's a young adult. She's worked in various roles but has now secured a job in the travel industry, which pretty much ties into her degree in geography. And she works from home three days a week. So we can imagine that her IT skills are pretty good. The other two days she takes the underground to travel to work and she travels abroad once a month for work. Jade has always maintained and been in control of her budget, ensuring that she does not overspend and has never gone into her overdraft since university. Jade has an overdraft limit of £100. If she is short of money leading up to payday, she limits her spending. Jade has no outstanding debt except for her student loan, which she is repaying. Jade is controlling her budget and cuts back on items leading up to payday so she does not overspend. So we can imagine that these items that she's cutting back on are some discretionary expenses, perhaps at socialising with friends. As Jade lives in a rented flat, she is likely to have mandatory expenses such as council tax and TV licence to pay, and essential expenditure such as rent and underground tickets to work. Jade has an overdraft of £100 and she's had that since university, so that's probably around five years ago, but she never uses it. On a recent trip to the Seychelles, Jade had the opportunity to extend her work trip and take some personal holiday time. However, she would have had to pay an additional £500, which she did not have. On her return, Jade could see the benefit of having a small savings pot in case she had another offer like this in the future. Jade has started to review her budget and has produced a new budget based on her current income and expenditure, not including her possible bonuses. She recognises that she is in a good financial position now, as she only has a student loan to repay. She has also calculated that after her mandatory essential and discretionary expenditure, she has £500 per month at her disposal. So Jade was away for work in the Seychelles and had the opportunity to extend the trip and take some personal holiday time, which it seems that she would have liked to do, but she doesn't have any savings. She didn't have the £500 to enable her to do so. Even the overdraft is £100 and that wouldn't be advisable to just dip into that. It would have been advisable to be able to access a savings account and just being able to take that money out, have a contingency fund, emergency fund or just a savings pot with some money in there. But she did not have that. So she can now see the benefit of having a small savings pot in case she had another offer like that through work, which is possible because she goes away for work on a monthly basis. Now, in regards to her budget, Jade has produced a new budget. She hasn't included her possible bonuses in there, though, but she's seen that she's in a good financial position as she only has a student loan to repay. And she's calculated that she has £500 per month at her disposal. So £500 per month, possibly to put into a savings pot. Jade feels that her bank could help her more with what she wants to achieve. She has been with the same bank since she started university, it's around five years ago, but has never visited a branch and feels that her current banking app is quite limited. She would like to investigate some online banks, their mobile apps and how they can help her to generate more savings. As we continue to look through the case study, you will see that a lot of the focus will be about investigating online banks, their mobile apps and how they can help Jade generate more savings. 
on to the research. What are online bank accounts? Online or digital bank accounts are a type of current account that can be opened and managed entirely online or through a smartphone app. You won't be able to visit a branch because the institutions that provide them exist entirely online. Now, that wouldn't be a problem for Jade because she's never visited her current bank's branch. So she's never gone into an actual branch for the bank that she's with. So that wouldn't be an issue at all. When you open a current account with a digital bank, you'll be able to access all the same services you would from a high street bank account, just from your phone in your own time. Is an online bank account right for me? If you want to open and manage your current account with a smartphone app, an online bank account could be a good fit for your needs. What can I do through the online banking app? You can carry out all day-to-day -day banking tasks you'd expect from a current account through the online banks app, including setting up and managing direct debits or standing orders, sending and receiving money, updating personal details, opening and managing an overdraft. Many of the apps offered by digital banks also come with added tools and functionalities that could make it easier to manage your money, such as in-app saving pops, budgeting tools and personal payment links that allow you to get paid without giving out bank details. Do online bank accounts come with an overdraft? Some will offer this facility, but as with all borrowing, whether you're eligible to use this facility will depend on your credit history. Some of the tasks and features of a current account in the High Street Bank are similar to those in the online banks app too. Now if we relate this to Jade, setting up and managing direct debits or standing orders. When it comes to direct debits, Jade might have a TV license direct debit. When it comes to standing orders, she might have a standing order that she needs to set up in order to pay her rent. Sending and receiving money, Jade will need to receive money from her work, her job in the travel industry. Maybe she needs to update her personal details, whether it's a change in email address or phone number or she moves house. So she does need that to be fairly straightforward. And it's a feature that's offered on the online banking app. Opening and managing an overdraft. She currently has an overdraft at £100. Perhaps she would want to have one with the new online banking app. Typically, you will need to apply for an overdraft separately once you have opened the bank account. How do I open an online bank account? Opening an online bank account is usually very quick. Depending on the account, you can open it online or by downloading the provider's app from the App or Google Play Store. You'll be prompted to enter the same personal details you would when opening a traditional current account. These details include your full name, date of birth, address, contact number and employment status. You must also have a valid form of photo ID, such as a passport or driving license, to hand so the account provider can verify your identity. Now, as Jade travels with work on a monthly basis and she's just got back from the Seychelles, we can imagine that her passport is up to date. Can I switch online bank accounts? Yes, you can switch to a different online bank account whenever you want. Like their traditional counterparts, the majority of online bank accounts are covered by the current account switch service. The service automatically moves your incoming and outgoing payments over to the new account and closes the old one. This would work quite well for Jade. She could actually use the switch service to switch from the current account that she has had since she started university to a new one. Top app-based bank accounts. To get your head around app-based banking, it helps to know the following. One, the apps really help you know where your money is going. Many rely on them to stick to a budget. Although these apps aren't solely meant for budgeting, the main ones we feature in this guide can really help you to keep your finances in check. They give real-time notifications when you spend or save. So for example, if you bought something for £5 in boots, you get an instant notification on your phone telling you what you spent. Another feature they have is to give you insights into your spending habits. This means you'll easily be able to see how much you spend in one particular shop each month, or more generally, how much you spend on entertainment or travel. Like any other bank, your money is protected up to £85,000 in an app-based bank. When it comes to your finances, you want to be sure your money is safe. So it is important to understand how your money is protected. 
UK regulated banks have financial services compensation scheme protection. This covers up to £85,000 of your money in the unlikely event of a bank going bankrupt. The apps below, Starlin, Chase and Monzo are fully regulated UK banks and are therefore covered by the FSCS. This means your money is protected in the same way as it would be with a big traditional bank such as Barclays, HSBC, Lloyds or NatWest. The real-time notifications can be very beneficial when Jade spends or saves. For example, it can help her control her budget because she's going to get these notifications about expenses and, and items that she's actually spending. And there has been occasions when Jade has been short of money leading up to payday. So she's had to limit her spending. So these real-time notifications can really help. And it could be also beneficial for her saving as well because she's realised that she has £500 per month at her disposal to possibly save. Jade can rest assured that up to £85,000 of her money will be protected in this in-app based bank, protected by the FSCS. She's realised that she has £500 at her disposal if she decides to save all of that or up to for a given year, that would be 500 times 12 months, that's £6,000. All of that £6,000 will be protected. Up to £85,000 in total will be protected by the FSCS if she opens one of these in-app based bank accounts. So she shouldn't worry. Three, app based accounts are cool and high tech, but you can often get better rewards elsewhere. These app based accounts are pretty cool and high tech, but Jade does need to look into seeing if she can get better rewards elsewhere. We don't have information about Jade's current credit score. However, we do know that she has a overdraft of £100 that she doesn't use and she hasn't used and she doesn't have any debts. Top app based bank accounts. Let's take a look at Starlin first. So useful spending notifications, great for budgeting and top for overseas use. And we know that Jade is in control of her budget. She likes to budget. She's aware of her mandatory, essential and discretionary expenditure. So this works quite well for Jade in terms of great for budgeting. Plus top for overseas use. Jade travels overseas for work once a month. So that's also a benefit there. Starling Bank gives real time notifications when you use your debit card, insights into your spending and lets you set up savings goals. We know that Jade does want to save and she's realized the benefit of saving. So it allows you to set up savings goals. You can earn a very small amount of in credit interest. So there's some interest that could be earned on the actual money that is in your current account, not just in the savings account. There are no fees for spending or cash withdrawals abroad, making it top pick debit card overseas. So Jade will be able to use her debit card overseas and there's no fees for spending or withdrawing any cash while she's abroad. She was recently in the Seychelles for work and then she, she goes to a different destination each month. Service rating 91% great. Overseas fees none. In credit interest, AER variable, 0.05% up to £85,000. How to pay in? Cash at any post office, checks via app, post. Jade is able to go to a local post office. She works from home two days a week. Perhaps she is able to go to the post office on one of those days or even on the way to work or after work. And she can deposit cash if she requires or a check in at the post office. Arranged overdraft cost, 15%, 25% or 35%. We know that Jade currently has an overdraft of £100. Although she doesn't use it, she has one. Unarranged overdraft cost, none. Get the app, iOS rated 4.95 or Android rated 4.85. And here's a tip, do compare the app ratings. Chase. 1% cash back on purchases and no fees to spend withdraw cash abroad. And we know that Jade travels abroad on a regular basis, on a monthly basis. The app only Chase current account gives a top rate of cash back on most spending. This would be beneficial for Jade as when she's actually spending money, 
using the debit card, she will also be getting cash back. You can also set up its roundup feature, which rounds all purchases up to the nearest one pound with a difference auto saved into a separate account paying 5%. And we know that Jade wants to start saving. She's seen the benefits of saving. You can create up to 20 extra accounts and there's also a monthly spending overview. Great for helping to manage your money. And this could be beneficial for Jade. She does budget and she does like to be in control of her money. So this might also be a feature that would be good for her. Service rating 94%. Overseas fees none. In credit interest. AER variable 3% on 500,000 via its linked savings account. Plus 5% on small amount saved in the roundup account. How to pay in, cannot pay in cash. A range overdraft cost not available. So that means there's no overdraft available. She currently has an overdraft of £100, but she would not be able to have an overdraft on this type of account. Perhaps that's not an issue as she doesn't use her current overdraft. Get the app, iOS rated 4.95 or Android rated 4.15. Monzo helps you budget and also offers savings accounts with partner banks. We know that Jade likes to budget. And also this feature of offering savings accounts with partner banks could be quite beneficial because there'll be a number of partner banks that Monzo's with and Jade would get a choice of choosing to save the up to £500 that she has at her disposal every month with any of them. And that would probably be based on the ones that have got the highest interest or the one that's got the type of access that she wants, etc. So Monzo has links with other partner banks. Monzo has similar features to Starling, real-time spending notifications and insights into where you're spending. The insights feature perhaps wasn't a feature offered by Jade's current provider, who she feels their current banking app is limited and won't help her with what she wants to achieve. The insights feature can be helpful as it shows a breakdown of spending and balance over time, which could help her overall have a better understanding of her income and expenses and help her manage her finances better, whether in the UK or for work trips abroad. And overall, help her generate more savings. It's also good for overseas use, particularly if you won't withdraw cash or will only get small amounts, which we know Jay travels overseas on a monthly basis. The difference comes with savings, as well as letting you set up pots. Monzo lets you move savings into an account with a partner bank, so you get decent interest, though top pick savings usually have better rates. Service rating, 87%. Great. Overseas fees, none on spending. The worldwide ATM withdrawals, only fee free up to £200, 30 day period, 3% fee after. So there's none on spending, no overseas fees on spending. The worldwide ATM withdrawals, only fee free up to £200. So if she were to withdraw over £200, then there's going to be a fee, which is 3%. So she just needs to be aware of that. And that's within a 30 day period. And she tends to travel once a month abroad with work. In credit interest, none. How to pay in cash at any pay point. One pound fees. There's a fee to deposit any money in the account. Checks via post. That's also an option. Arranged overdraft cost. AER 19%, 29% or 39%. Do ensure that you compare things like this, the overdraft cost with the other accounts. Unarrange overdraft cost as above, if applicable, or 39%, maximum £15, 50 pence per month. And we know that Jade has an overdraft of £100 currently with her current bank. Get the app iOS rated 4.95 or Android rated 4.75. Do ensure you're comparing these ratings with the other options as this should form part of your evaluation thank you for watching this video the next two videos that will appear on the screen are what youtube thinks you should watch next